All right, I know I'm running out of time, but bear with me. I just want to show you one more interesting application uh, by extending our example quickly. Okay, not too long, please. All right, so what I will do is I'm going to create uh, a new console application. So now copy sequence app one, right click and say copy, and then right click and say paste. I'm going to modify the application just a little bit to, for you to see uh, the difference. Okay, sequence app two, that's good. All right. And then double click on sequence app two. Okay, we're still going to ask for the first turn. We're still going to ask for the common difference. But now, rather than specifying the fixed size for the sequence, let's ask the user to specify what's going to be the maximum upper bound for the sequence term. Okay, let's make the following assumption. Okay, let's make an assumption. Of course, you don't need to do any uh, error handling assumption common difference is strictly positive okay let's assume that right it's always strictly positive okay so now enter the uh, maximum value of the arithmetic sequence remember that arithmetic sequence is going to start from the first turn and then add up the diff common difference one each right maybe you go from three and then to five and then to seven and then to nine you will definitely go increasingly right uh, until certain uh, number so it's guaranteed the maximum number of the sequence is always the last term right agree okay uh, and then so that means the maximum value of uh, sequence is the last term right that's very obvious right so now the user doesn't really tell us about what's the uh, the fixed size uh, like a size number uh, size 5 or maybe uh, length 10 it's different from the version one. In version two, the user simply tell it what's the maximum value of the arithmetic sequence. So when you generate a sequence from your utility method, you're going to somehow to say, I'm going to keep generating the next turn until the next turn is actually strictly larger than the maximum value that is user actually specify, right? That's really another interesting uh, way to really uh, use the loop, right? Which you definitely cannot do without the loops for sure. All right. So now what I will do is uh, look, okay, that's about it, right? We're still going to read in some integer over here. So I'm just uh, prompting the user for a different uh, different kind of a, a value that's still integer. I'm going to use uh, 2a and 2b. So version 2 is going to be about this particular version where the, the size of the sequence is kind of indefinite, right? It can be very large if the maximum value is very large. It can be very small if the maximum value uh, is relatively small. And then I'm going to use, let's say, 2a over here. Of course, it doesn't exist just yet, but I will do that now. Let me go back uh, to my uh, model uh, package utilities over here. Let me just copy 1a, OK? You know what? I would say let's copy 1b, if you don't mind. OK, I'm going to copy 1b over here. Copy 1b, and then I'm going to name it as 2b over here. All right, let me just go back to sequence app 2. And then I'll say 2B. So B means I'm going to use a while loop. Okay. I think in this kind of a, like an indefinite situation to say, I want to do something until certain condition has been met. So this will be a very nice fit for the while loop because you only got a state condition to be specified. All right. I'll try to give you more insight later a week, but I know I'm running out of time. So I'll be quick. All right. So let me go to utilities over here. Let's go to get sequence 2B over here. So now you can see the state condition here. We say that as long as we have not generated so many turns uh, bounded by the number of turns over here, we should be OK. We should keep doing it. But now we're just going to flip our mind a little bit over here. Okay, You can see now you can think about this part over here is going to be the max. OK. And then let me just go back here. You can think about you can see I, I can also change this. So this will just be max, but it doesn't have to be. But I'll just say that's max. That's a maximum value supplied by the user over here, right? Let's go back to utilities over here. So now this would be the maximum value for the sequence, right? So now I would say while, so now guys, would you help me suggest something over here? Would you help me? Pause the video, think about it. I want to say, I'll give you a little bit of hints. Pause the video, think about the following. I want to say, as long as the current turn has now reached, what has not exceeds, uh, exceeded the maximum value that I should keep generating. All right. So what I will put is I'm going to put, assuming that you have thought about it, I can say the turn I have accumulated so far, right, 
if that's already strictly larger than the maximum that the user specifies. Or you know what? If uh, that's less than or equal to, I said it the other way. If the turn that has been accumulated so far is less than what could the maximum that means we are still within the bound then we should keep generating uh, the next turn for the sequence what about the negation so notice that exiting from the loop means the negation of the state condition which is turn less than what you could max is the case i.e can you simplify this particular expression over here? We learned about it, right? Not a case less than what you could do. It should be strictly larger than. So that means uh, the turn is strictly larger than max, which means as soon as the turn is strictly larger than the maximum bound, this user specified we exit from the loop, right? Uh, you can also refer to your lecture material to see more about such a logical manipulation, right? I'll leave that to you. And then apparently I can tell you that there will be some catch right now. In this new uh, version over here, we don't necessarily know about the uh, the final turn so easily. I would say since we got a very limited time left, so I'll make it slightly easier for you this time. Let's not worry about the comma. Let's not worry about it. Maybe next week when I got more time, I'll try to improve that a little bit further. Okay, for now, I just want to give you a working version that's good enough. Okay, so now I can say unconditionally, I always put a space. Let's say always. always put a space after that, including the last term. I'll improve that later. Maybe not this week, okay? I want to uh, finish that as soon as possible, but still maintaining clarity. All right, so I think that's it, right? You can see the only thing I did was I changed the state condition here. You really want to compare the state condition here in 2B versus 1B over here, right? This is about less than or equal to n, meaning that we uh, as long as we haven't generated so many turns in the sequence, we're gonna keep going. This is to say, as long as the last turn, uh, the, if the current turn is still within the bound, that user specified, we should keep generating the sequence uh, in the turn, uh, the turn in the sequence. All right, let's try this right away. Let me try the, uh, uh, over here. Uh, let's see, uh, also, oh, how many turns do we have, right? So now we also need to accumulate the term, right? Let's say integer i is initially, uh, let's say one over here. Let's say zero. You can think about n over here is the number of turns uh, that we have, uh, we have generated so far, okay? And then you can say, if we are able to go into the while loop for the very first time, that means i n should be incremented, right? from zero to one for the very first iteration, right? And then n over here will be a recording how many turns they are, all right? All right, so let's now see this uh, in action. I wouldn't have so much time to really go over all the details. I'll leave that to you to, for your, as a case study, and then I will try to give you more insight maybe next week, all right? So let's now go to sequence app two over here. If I try to run it over here, for example, First turn, let's say three. Common difference is five. Let's say the maximum value should be, uh, let's say 20 over here. So you can see you will generate three and then eight and then 13 and then 18. The reason that you wouldn't go on to 23 is because 23 is larger than already uh, than 20, right? And then this is the average, right? You can see there's some imperfection over here. You can see after the last turn, we still got some extra space over here. I would like to get rid of it, but I will talk about it maybe uh, next time together with you. I'll do that next time. All right. Let me now uh, just uh, convert this into a for loop very quickly and I'll write JU in the test and then we're done. All right. Let's go back here. Uh, let me go back to utilities over here. And then uh, I'm just going to create one uh, like a 2A as well. So now how do we convert while loop into for loop? It is also next exercise for you to do. Let's say 2A over here, all right? And then what I would say is, I'm going to say, uh, uh, well, you know what? I can do something like this. I can say for loop, semicolon, and semicolon. Oh, sorry, there's semicolon over here. Okay, this will work right away, right? And in this case, uh, we actually got a uh, loop counter over here. You don't, uh, the value of i, don't worry about it, that's okay, just a loop counter over here, that's fine. 
I think uh, in the case of full, yeah, actually, since we are doing this, uh, the state condition is really about the turn less than or equal to the maximum. So we are, we don't really need a loop counter here anymore. That's the beauty about uh, this uh, second version over here, because you don't necessarily have to use a loop counter always. Okay, let me get rid of it. Okay, since the eclipse tells us we don't need it, right? Get rid of it. Okay, and then we also we can also get rid of it as well. In case you're confused, let me um, just use uh, 10 seconds to tell you what, what's going on over here. In the very first version over there, we need to use the I over here to tell us how many turns have been generated so far in order for us to know whether we should really exit from the loop. Because as soon as we get to end turns, we should really exit. However, in the second version, the situation is different. We don't really know how many turns we need. So that's why the loop counter is not, is not going to be useful. The only thing we need to use to really determine if we should exit from the loop is to see whether the current last turn over here that's being accumulated, right? You can see every time we accumulate, turn by D. If the last turn we have generated so far is still within the bound for maximum, how many turns we have generated is not relevant. Simply not. Negative. All right? So that's why we don't need a loop counter. Yeah, just study this uh, carefully. And then I just want to give you more example. Let me go back to JUnit test very quickly and then uh, let's do it. Let's now create, let's say just create version 1a quickly. And I can just reuse the console example I just did. Let's say 2a over here. All right. What did I did? Uh, 3 and 5. 3 and 5. And then this should be 2a, right? Just don't call the wrong version because they function, they function differently. And then the maximum should be 20, right? And then I know that the uh, output should be something like this. I can simply copy it and then paste it over here. That's a good test to automate later. All right, let's now run this very quickly to make sure it passed. Okay, we got three tests, they, they all passed. Let me do also 2b quickly. Okay, I'm gonna do 2b over here. And then it's also going to call 2b. Okay, over here. And then, so now I got four test cases over here. All right, so everything works. Okay, so now we got basically two versions. One is uh, about a fixed number of turns in the sequence. That's for 1a and 1b. One use for loop, the other one use a while loop. And also we got version number two, which is about we don't know exactly how many turns there should be in the uh, sequence, but we should only know the last turn should be less than or equal to some user specified uh, maximum value. That's all we know. So that's why I say it's indefinite. So try to study this uh, second version here yourself a little bit more carefully, and then you should be able to do your lab exercises uh, for this week. It should be enough. And then for next week, I promise I'll try to give you more insights into this particular uh, version over here, uh, version number two, and also I'll try to run some debugger uh, to uh, in front of you uh, to really show it, uh, to really bring you to the more deeper understanding. And then, but you should really try it with the debugger if you can. Anyway, that's about it for this week. And then I'll see you next week.